right into it. You know, I wanted to bring this up yesterday, but I forgot. So I'm glad we kind of circling back with another one of these quarterbacks. We made a bet earlier in the year, you know, me and my bros up here and refuse to lose. And it was we got to pick QBs to win or make the Super Bowl this year. That means they could win it, which is a plus, but just making it. And I can review the names right quick. I'm going to go over them real quick. So, Joe, your quarterbacks, you have Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, <laughs> Jordan Love, and Aaron Rodgers. Come on, Dave, no, alive. <laughs> man. And Dave, he got Jared Goff, Josh Allen, Stafford, and Deshaun Watson. I think, <laughs> I think that was about to fall. Joe, you always laughing, man. My bad. I, in my rundown, I have okay. Lamar, Purdy, Stroud, and Tua. Now, Purdy, I mean, we already see what the injuries are doing there, but he's been playing Purdy. I would say Purdy decent. I would say Purdy bad. It's Purdy average. It's Purdy average. It's a Purdy average season that he's having. Lamar, we're going to talk about him. Y'all already know. MVP. But we're going to roll right into my third pick with C.J. Stroud. And I picked C.J. Stroud more so because of what the Texans did last year and how they added more weapons to their team. Some people will say, you're not as good the second time around. Or maybe is it a sophomore slump? Mm. Joe, this guy was the second overall pick in 2023. He led the Texans to the playoffs. 10-7 and seven record. AFC South Division. Do you think the first year was just, you know, that – magical season kind of like which i have i mean <laughs> or is it a sophomore slump because people have more tape on um so i do not think he's going through a sophomore slump mm. let me start there i don't think he's going through a sophomore slump now i'm gonna read his numbers real quick so far for the season 1600 yards 66 percent completion percentage 10 touchdowns four interceptions so he's still being pretty careful, um, um, protective with the, for the football. He did a better job last year around this time. But I, the difference between this year and last year is the competition he's facing. That's the difference. You know, I know some guys want to say that about my guy. I told y'all they won 10 games last year. And the reason why I wasn't hounding this year, although they're five and two, you know what I mean? So shout out to the Texans. They're five and two. But I wasn't so high on them. I'm like, yo, they got a they got a brutal schedule. And I felt like last year was not an aberration, but they had a, a light schedule. I look at their opponents from last year. Look at the teams they beat, Tombo. They played Baltimore week one. Guess what? Baltimore was the best defense in the NFL. Lost. They played the Colts and lost. Then they played the Jacksonville Jaguars. They played the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Falcons and lost. The Falcons had 11 best defense when they come to yards. They played the Saints and won. Same thing with the playoffs. They played the uh, Carolina Panthers, only scored 13 points, fourth best defense when it comes to yards. Buccaneers, who had a bad defense last year. Bengals, the Cardinals, lost to the Jaguars. Beat Denver, played the Jets, who had a third best defense, only scored six points. Mm. So you look at the, the games he struggled, it's against the top defenses. But every other team are bottom 15 defenses. So this year alone, he already played the Bears. They lead the league in turnovers. I'm sorry, they don't. They third. But they won the best defense in the league. Minnesota? Buffalo? Good defense? Green Bay? Number one in turnovers right there? You know, so they've been, they've been playing better competition this year. So that's why it looks bad. Now, I would say that last game against Green Bay, that whole offense, they, they look different without Nico Collins. They really do. I know your boy Diggs over there, but, I mean, I mean, I, I didn't really see him that much yesterday. You know, Joe Mixon kept him alive. And also last year, between this year, last year they had no running game, so they had to rely more on CJ. But now this year they, they are establishing a run a lot more this year. Even when Cam Akers was there, when Joe Mixon was hurt, they were still running the ball. Joe Mixon had over 120 yards last, last night, yesterday. So I would say no, he's not going through a sophomore slump because he's still playing well. It's just he's playing better competition, and they're establishing the market. They're a run first team more so often now, nowadays. I have to agree with you on the I don't think he's going through a sophomore slump because I think some of these games he actually had to help them win with his arm because you got to think Joe Mixon was out a few of those games also with them being a run first team. 
And I think those were the games where Nico Collins was showing off. And yesterday, before we ended the show, I don't know if we said it on air. We did talk about this on air when he was like AJ Brown about the top mm-hmm. five receivers. And as soon as I get off, Nico, came Nico Collins pop up. And I'm like, well, if we talking about this year, <laughs> this would have been a year that he could cre- he's creeping up into that top 10 conversation because you you add Stefan Diggs, who everyone always puts in their top 10. We might have to start reshuffling some things based upon years. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, you're with a better – I'm not going to say a better quarterback, but you're in a better situation mentally for yourself based upon what you were saying, right? And it's just – it's looking similar to what you was doing with Josh Allen. It's almost looking similar to what was happening when you left the Vikings. So it's like, Steph, what do you actually want from the game at this point? Like – Somebody needs to ask him that. You know how these people in the locker room, they always want to ask him about what happened with him and Jair. But outside of that, it's like, well, between what happened to you and Jair and these few other games, you kind of been MIA. Mm-hmm. And coach say you don't play when it's cold. You in Texas. Like, I know it get cold down there sometimes, but you in Texas in a dome. Like, what's going on? Is the offense not – it's not too much. Let me let me stop. I was having a Merlin Turp moment. I'm going to leave it alone because <laughs> Carl backstage – but as far as CJ, I think again is getting acclimated with that new weapon that he got. He also with their new with the run game, it's more pro, it's more consistent. I'm not gonna say it's less because they had I think they had singles Harry last year. I can't think of the running back they had last yeah, year. Uh, no, they had um Coles was killing him. I forgot who it was, but yeah. Um but I think I'll throw the D, I think. Uh, uh, what was his name? I'm, I'm I can't gonna, think of his name right I now. Think of it right now. But is he in a sophomore slump? No, I think you give him some more time. He's just getting more acclimated. And with his go-to re- receiver, uh, Nico Collins not being there yesterday, that means that right there kind of hurts. And then Tank Dale didn't even show up. Like, yeah, it's bad enough if Steph is not having a good game, but Tank Dale also didn't show up. So that, it was just a bad day for their offense. So I'm going to give him, like, two more games before I say this looks like a slump because he is balling at times. However... I don't like really comparing guys to their rookie season right after the second season because it's like, well, I told you once we get film on you, this is what's going to happen. Because I'm going to ask you now, Joe, do you think Jaden going to be playing this good next year with the first place schedule? Oh, yeah. You, you're already speaking to this Yeah. I mean, y'all in first place right now, Joe. Yeah. Like, I got to say it right now. And by the way, it was Damian Pierce. There we go. So, yeah. But my man Jaden different. He ain't CJ. All right, let's let, let, let you know right now. He's not CJ. My man, a little different than CJ. One of a kind. So when we One do this bet next year, you gonna put Jaden up there as, if you get the pick? For sure. First overall pick for me. Right, first overall pick. pick first. right now. First uh, overall pick. I'm glad you said that because if I get the first pick, <laughs> I'm gonna do it just cause. <laughs> Just cause. I, I, I forgot how we did a pick. Let me do the corner. We did rock paper scissors on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, real quick though, Stefan Diggs, uh, yeah, he's not having an all pro type year, but he hasn't been bad. I will say that because you gotta realize he was a second option with Nico, and he's and he's sharing. First of all, they are running first team with Joe Mason when he's healthy, and you got Nico and you got Tank Dell, so he's not gonna get all the targets. And I feel like he's been he's been he's been pretty good. Uh, yesterday he only had twenty three yards. That's different. That whole offense on the receipt on the receiving side wasn't good. You know, I think Tank Dell dropped the touchdown. I think I would Tank Dell, but and the Texans defense playing well too. That's another thing. So, like, like you said, give it a couple of games, see how it looks. I mean, it could my man Jaden a... different. It's not even my man to this mix. Well, I'm gonna let you give your man your props while I take a shot at another team because technically another team could have been a run first team with Stefan Diggs, but they chose not to. So that's they are now though. They ain't got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they ain't got no choice. <laughs> But we're gonna bring uh 